Visit our fabulous sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry, link in the description below. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of February 24, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. Most of the activity this week takes place as we get towards the end of the week. Thursday and Friday are the peak celestial days, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. And it starts with a moment of conversation, harmonious conversation between the sun and Mars. Now the sun is newly in the sign of Pisces, moved into that sign last week. And this is a sign that represents the dream and inspiration and having an inspired idea. Now Mars is moving through the sign of Taurus. Taurus is very grounded energy, it's practical, and Mars as an energy in and of itself has to do with action, determination, and self-knowledge. And it is from that place of self-knowledge that our most confident actions can take place. In fact, both of these planets, Mars and the Sun, are connected with a sense of confidence and motivation. So when these two planets speak in a conversation of harmony, it is a type of conversation that astrologers call a sextile. And this is a truly empowering type of conversation, not only because of the nature of the planets involved, both of them have to do with empowerment as well, but because this conversation is one that is considered easy. It is one of blessings, but it's the kind where you have to actually do something to maximize the blessings available to you. So all of us in at least one area of life very likely are going to find some opportunity shows up, some inspiration, some sense of being pointed in a particular direction, but it is up to us to harness the motivation so that we actually follow through so that we actually take some steps towards the realization of what looks like a wonderful possibility. There is potential here, but the great thing is, is that we actually can participate in the maximization of the potential available to us. We can participate in the unfolding of our blessings and our participation is evident. It is obvious to us. And thankfully we are also motivated to take those steps. In fact, this conversation, again, that astrologers call a sextile has a measure of motivation in it as well. There's another type of conversation that comes up from time to time called a trine and astrologers will sometimes contrast a sextile from a trine because they're both considered what's called easy aspects, aspects of blessings or conversations where we're able to bring about good things in ways that feel harmonious. However, with the trine, the nature of that conversation is one where we have so much faith, we have so much trust that sometimes we won't actually back it up with action. And so in this way, it is actually considered to be more fortunate to see the sextile because even though the trines are a more powerful type of conversation, it is the sextile that ensures that we play our part. Trines can make us lazy. They can have us sit back and believe that great things are possible and they will show up for us. But thankfully, this isn't that type of conversation. This is a sextile, which means that we are able to maximize the opportunities that show up and there will be opportunity in at least one area of life. Opportunity that enlivens us, that gives us energy, that gives us juice, that brings genuine enthusiasm into our lives. As we move towards Friday, that is when Venus will start to become active in the sky. First speaking with Uranus before changing signs. So Venus has been, over the last few weeks, moving through the sign of Capricorn. And last week was quite intense where it came to Venusian matters, meaning that it was particularly active in the sky where it came to our understanding of love and money as well. Venus has been moving through the sign of Capricorn, which tends to be an energy that is considered quite practical. It's grounded. It is more interested in tangible results and is looking at things from a practical lens. And so having Venus last week 
meet Saturn and then meet Pluto. For some people, it was actually a little refreshing. It was being able to see things in a more balanced way and being able to appreciate the reality of where they are and find a deeper acceptance. For other people though, it was a more intense energy and there might have felt that there were some complicating factors where it came to matters of love and for some, perhaps even matters of money as well. Well, now this is going to be one of the last important conversations that Venus has before changing signs while in the sign of Capricorn speaking with Uranus. But this is also an interesting energy from Uranus's perspective because Uranus now will spend its final full week in the sign of Aries. Next week, Uranus will change signs not to return to the sign of Aries for decades to come. It is a good time to re-watch the Uranus special horoscope, that's for sure, because we are coming up to a very big week next week. Now, I'll talk about it more when we get there, but suffice it to say, with this being the last full week that Uranus is moving to the sign of Aries and speaking with Venus, I feel like this is going to be our chance to look at where it is that we have truly allowed ourselves to be free. Where it is that we've lived a life that feels truly authentic, that feels like it resonates with some deep understanding of ourselves as an individual. And how has that now lent itself to a change in our ambitions? And how do we now define ambition uniquely for ourselves? How do we understand what an authentic path means for us and our unique definition of success in light of the journey that we have been on in at least one area of life as Uranus attempted to help us to get more honest with ourselves about who we really are and what we really want. And how has that understanding of self lent itself to our relationship with our elders, our understanding of our ancestors and where it is that our contribution will lie to the legacy that we leave. And so there's this intimate connection now with an appreciation of honesty within and how that has changed our understanding of the lives we live in a bigger, more public way. Well, this is the last conversation that Uranus is going to have, the last major conversation that Uranus will have before changing signs next week. So we really are in for, in some ways, yes, there are surprises, there are shocks. Just on one level, Venus speaking with Uranus in this type of conversation with tension uh, is not the time to plan romantic surprises. They really can go in all kinds of directions that we hadn't anticipated. Uh, declarations of love as well uh, can go in directions we had not hoped for. And so where possible, it may be a good idea uh, to hold back on some surprise that may be planned. And I would also add that this can be a very powerful time where it comes to being personally more honest with ourselves about where we are in love and why. And being able to see another person from a different perspective, but it's when we are pursuing that, when it is that we want others to see us differently, we want others to desire us, well, that's when we start tapping into an energy where uh, the results can go, as I said, in all kinds of directions. Now, if it is that, you feel uh, that some interest is being expressed in you that you don't share. Kindness can go a very, very long way uh, with a week like this in helping us to navigate and to ensure that we are valuing the feelings of others. Now, where it comes to that Venus moving through the sign of Capricorn, there's been a sense with this of loving success or uh, seeing people who are successful more favorably, people who have status uh, more favorably in a nicer, lighter light. Well, when these two planets speak in this way, it's like uh, what it means to be truly yourself and what it means to be successful. They have a need to find middle ground where it seems to be hard. Now of these two planets, Venus and Uranus, Uranus is the stronger in this conversation. 
And so what that means is, as nice as Venus can be, as nice as that uh, illusion of success, uh, that sense of desire for what is possible and what seems so big is, there is this sense now at the same time that being true to one's self is the greatest form of power and is the truly authentic way to live. And it is going to be that authenticity that is most celebrated at this time. Now on the same day, Venus is going to change signs. And so what we consider beautiful, what we are celebrating as more ideal collectively is going to go through a transformation, not only because Venus is changing signs, but as a result of this conversation as well. It is going to be Venus that moves into the sign of Aquarius. Now Uranus is the modern ruling planet of the sign of Aquarius as well. And so even before Venus gets there, we've already got this Uranian energy. We've already got this sense that what is different, what is rebellious is more beautiful. And then Venus actually changes signs. And in the weeks ahead, for most of the month of March, uh, it's going to be more about celebrating that sense of an eccentric type of love. And so whether it is that we find ourselves more intrigued by uh, people who are different than others, or whether it is that we are finding ourselves more rebellious in the choices that we're making, where it comes to desire, where it comes to love, but also with Venus, it has to do with money. It has to do with fashion as well. You think about Venus moving through Capricorn, that tends to be very classic sense of style. But then Venus moves on into the sign of Aquarius and it becomes about wear whatever you want. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Uh, experiment, try out new things and make sure that what it is that you are wearing, uh, the fashion choices, the style choices are actually expressing some sort of individuality. And so the ways in which uh, our individuality can be expressed there's a, a double-edged sword, as they say. On the one hand, it's wonderful to be comfortable with yourself, to be at peace with yourself, and so you do feel free to express yourself as you want. That's a beautiful way to use this energy. Uh, but the other side of it is when individuality becomes a performance, when it is that we are showing people how free we are, uh, how cutting edge we are, based on our style choices, because inside we're not feeling connected to those values and that we hold as values. And especially with Venus representing a sense of value as well, these are going to be things that we are talking about and more interested in and holding up as ideals at this time. The sense of individuality and going your own way and marching to the beat of your own drum. Now, where is it that that springs from an authentic voice? Where is it that it's just a performance? Well, that's going to be part of the distinction and the real learning opportunity ahead but yes where it comes to matters of love if we thought that Venus in Capricorn speaking with Uranus uh, could bring with it some uh, very unusual ways of expressing our interest when it comes to matters of love it is going to be once Venus moves into Aquarius that those demonstrations become that much more notable uh, and that much more interesting and yes unusual as well as a collective we may find on the fashion front uh, there may be some people who have a sense of style that catches our attention for being just so unusual but also as i said venus has to do with money as well our understanding of what's worth the money and this can be a time when uh, something particularly unusual uh, seems to be celebrated for the amount of money that it brings in or for how much it ends up costing. And so we can see some sort of a display of a spontaneous uh, way of actually utilizing our funds. Now, I would also add uh, this part of the sky, the sign of Aquarius, also has to do with uh, humanitarian efforts as well. And so this can be a time when uh, a large donation of some kind, a monetary donation towards a humanitarian cause makes news as well. So we should have a lookout for that over the course of the month of March. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there is a lot here. But I do really love that beautiful connection between the Sun and Mars. It's this wonderful mix of the intuition and the imagination of the energy of Pisces meeting 
this sense of embodiment and empowerment of Mars. All of us in some way are going to find ourselves visited by inspiration. Now it could just be the inspiration to do something good, to express uh, compassion towards another, or to trust our own imaginative faculties and create something that we can feel truly proud of, uh, to actually manifest something that is based on our connection to the divine, allowing ourselves to be carried away on a wave that leads us to manifest something that feels really good, that feels like a genuine contribution and that springs from a more spiritual place within. It is when we are connected to source that some of our most powerful manifestations can take place. And with such powerful energy as this, as the sun speaking in harmony with Mars, well, it is not only about manifestation, but it's also about ensuring that we carry out our task with absolute confidence and certainty about who we are, grounding that sense of identity in spiritual space. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? What are you excited about? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. You know, I absolutely love reading you guys. So yes, what do you love about this week? We've got a lot of love energy thanks to Venus, not only speaking with Uranus, but moving into the sign of Aquarius. That tells me that at least the love energy uh, is going uh, to go in all kinds of directions. It's going to be rather eccentric. And so maybe that's something you love, but whatever it is, I'd love to read it. Uh, please do leave a comment below. If you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Please do visit our sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry. You can see the link in the description below. Of course, all the links of all the things I'm talking about are in is in the description below. Uh, but I'm really very grateful to them for partnering with me, uh, for sponsoring the weekly videos. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me because I love their work. I've been a fan of theirs for many, many years and I've already put in my order. I'm really excited about getting my jewelry, uh, but they create create astrological jewelry uh, and jewelry from so many different spiritual traditions and with different spiritual intentions that you're sure to find something that matches what it is that you're hoping to manifest in this year and beyond. And it definitely is worth checking out their website, if only for uh, the beautiful artwork of their creation. So please do have a look at the link in the description below for Ka Gold Jewelry. Now I've got a bunch of classes coming up online that I am really very excited about. Classes include Synchronicity University. Now this is an upcoming series that starts this coming Saturday. So at the end of this week, the first class will take place. And this is a series, as I said, near and dear to my heart. The inspiration of these came about through the questions that I was asked as I was uh, doing a bunch of live events towards the end of January and beginning of February. And it is really about empowering ourselves uh, as we navigate through some very difficult astrological transits this year and next year. So how is it that we can empower ourselves? How is it that we can empower others? How can we use astrology in a way that brings a sense of genuine forgiveness and faith and healing and understanding between two people who may be in conflict? So these are going to be some of the focuses of the different classes that I am going to be holding with Synchronicity University. So again, have a look at the description below uh, where you can learn more about the classes and access the link that will give you even more uh, understanding of the classes. One of the classes has to do with identifying your higher power. What is it that brings faith? How can you feel more connected to a higher power of your understanding? So that'll be one of the classes. Another will have to do with changing bonds uh, and how to address difficult relationships. Another is going to have to do with forgiveness, finding genuine forgiveness and how it is that the astrology chart can help us to do just that. 
And yet another class has to do with actually navigating moments of change that uh, can be difficult, navigating difficult transits that do take place uh, to a natal chart. And so I hope that you find value in them. As I said, I really believe in this series and uh, I hope that this is part of what helps people uh, to move forward this year and next year in particular. Link is below for synchronicityuniversity.com. Another online event that I'm going to be part of is being hosted by NCGR, a renowned astrological organization. Uh, that is gonna take place next Sunday. So at the very end of this week and beginning of next week is when that takes place. And it is going to be uh, three astrologers, myself included, and a day of online classes that are focused on relationships. So I will be uh, doing a class that is focused on the timing of the start of a relationship and what type of relationship it will be. If you are a student of astrology, whether you are in the very beginning stages or a more seasoned astrologer, uh, it is going to be over the course of this Sunday that a lot of techniques are going to be shared. And I think that we will find a lot of value in them as well. Uh, you know, when will love come is one of the most popular questions that is asked of an astrologer. And so uh, not only my class, but the other uh, renowned astrologers who are participating as well uh, will be teaching their own techniques towards understanding love from various perspectives. And so you can learn more about that at the link in the description below as well. Now, in alignment with uh, my uh, desire to affirm something good in these times of change, I will be doing live events in person as well. Of course, coming up very soon in the month of May, I will be in Vancouver and in Seattle. Really looking forward to those events. It is gonna be Labor Day weekend that I will be in Baltimore. And as we fast forward January, under the light of the exact conjunction of Saturn and Pluto, I will be involved in a cruise event. Uh, and the purpose of this cruise event is all about navigating through difficult times. And it is about helping people, taking them out of their comfort zone uh, and bringing people together so that we can jointly and share a powerful and karmic experience that facilitates love, joy, hope, and transformation. So I am one of several teachers, again, world-renowned teachers, who is a part of this cruise event. Uh, you can learn more in the description below. And this really is one of the lowest prices of a cruise that I have ever seen. And so there's the registration for the actual classes. It's going to be uh, really amazing, very full days as part of this one week cruise. And then there is also you connecting with a travel agent uh, that we have secured. Well, that Patricia Bell, amazing Patricia Bell has secured, who's actually helping us to organize, ensure that people who need a roommate can have that so that you can get an even lower rate uh, for uh, your cabin on the cruise and because I recently saw when I was at uh, the event when I spoke at the event in Mexico here uh, at the beginning of February and I saw how profound the experience is when groups of people are brought together to understand themselves more deeply through astrology and to participate in uh, spiritual practices and learn about spiritual practices together. It truly is a life-changing experience. And so I was very grateful to be part of that earlier this month and now to be part of that again coming up in January. Um, I think it is going to be an amazing experience for all, myself included. I will be participating along with you. I'll be one of many teachers. Now this live cruise event is also something that I really believe in and I think that this is going to be an important experience for all of the people involved. So if there's anything I can do to be part of facilitating your attendance, uh, please do let me know. I have power over the registration. So if it is uh, that you need a partial scholarship towards the registration, which is the payment for the classes, which is I think right now it's about $250. If you need a partial scholarship for that, uh, you can reach out to me using the contact form on my website. Now, as far as the payment towards the cruise, I don't have any control over that amount. It works out to something like $770 for seven days based 
based on double occupancy. And as I said, uh, it is the travel agency that can help you in terms of getting a roommate and all of that but also creating a payment plan as well. And we were doing some calculations and it is basically something like $85 a month over nine months allows you to pay for your cabin. And so uh, wherever it is that we can help connect you with the travel agency, I know as well that there are some huge uh, discount airlines, budget airlines that fly in and out of Fort Lauderdale, which is where we will be boarding. Well, however it is that we can help to facilitate that, please do let us know. There's an event page uh, on my Facebook page that you can check out where lots of updates are gonna be posted and you can ask your questions. And there is also a group uh, page on Facebook as well uh, for those of you looking to connect with others who are also participating in this cruise. So whatever we can do to facilitate your attendance, if you feel uh, that you are called to do this, don't limit your vision and to trust that it will come about if it is something that you're meant to do, uh, then please do reach out and we will do our best on our end to make sure that as many people as possible are able to have this important experience. And finally, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your sacred journey with me. I'm always so very grateful for it. We've got big things coming up next week that I'm really excited about, including a new moon happening on the same day as Uranus changing signs, moving into the sign of Taurus for a nice long stay right to the middle of the next decade. Plus, we're going to have Mercury retrograde as well in the same sign that the new moon takes place in. So there's going to be so much to talk about next week. Wherever it is that you are feeling inspired to go, whether literally or figuratively, I hope that you will tap into that energy of the sun and Mars this week. And of course, stay open to surprises where it comes to love and see where it is that your heart takes you. That may end up being one of the greatest surprises of all this week. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.